And now, tonight's presentation of radio's outstanding theater of thrills, Suspense. Tonight, the story of a pleasant young Englishman and his wife who encounter a murderer and a parson. They can't tell which is which, not for the life of them. So now, with Lawrence Dobkin as Edward and Paula Winslow as Joan, here is tonight's suspense play, A Little Matter of Memory. Some observations on B. Hard by Edward Mansell. I am recording the events of the past several hours in the hope that my observations may in some measure be of assistance to those who must treat that violent, that deranged, that homicidal psychotic which is Barrington Howard. My contact with the case began at five o'clock this afternoon. But first I feel I ought to explain the presence of my wife and self in this desolate and remote corner of the moors. On August 1st, I'd suffered a stroke which resulted in a partial paralysis of my left side. For my convalescence, we came to this place. A tiny cottage high on the moors near Buckworth. These moors have been to me a revelation and a delight. Or rather, were so until five o'clock of this afternoon. We'd been off on a tramp and were just returning to the cottage. Oh, but darling, whatever on earth will you do with all those flowers? Oh, I don't know. Dry them or something, I suppose. There was a talk on the wild or something about hanging them upside down so they'll <laughs> no. keep forever that way. Although, oh, here, hold them, will you, while I get the lock? Yes, I've got them. <laughs> Although just why anyone wants flowers hanging about upside down beats me right <laughs> yes. side up the way they were intended to. <laughs> now, what's this? Huh? Oh, someone's left us a note. Oh, two notes. But who's... Well, what is it? Close the door, Joan. Edward. Oh, wait, wait. I want to see this other. Well, what is it? What do they say? Well, this first is a threat. It's rather violent and obscenely worded. Oh, let me see. Uh, no, I'd rather you didn't. Here. Here, this second tells the story. Oh. My dear Mr. Mansell, in view of the news about... The man Howard, being at large somewhere in these parts, and your being so very isolated, you might welcome a little reinforcement. The police at Buckworth are all busy with cordons and whatever. The man Howard, being really an extremely dangerous maniac, and they haven't anybody to spare. I will look in on you this evening, and if you think it's a good idea, help you do sentry go during the night. It will be a pleasure to make your acquaintance, and I hope you will not, under the circumstance, think me intrusive. It's signed, George Beale, curate at Buckworth. Edward, what is in that other note? Well, it's from the... The signature is Barrington Howard. The curate says he's a maniac. Yes. And he's threatening us. Says he's coming back tonight. To kill us. But, but why? Well, there are no whys with maniacs. He's, he's out there somewhere. I, I'm frightened. Well, there are the police cordons and this curate chair. Yes, but suppose they don't catch him or, or the curate doesn't come. Now, John, look. Look, it's no use our standing here peering out that window. Let us look at this thing sensibly. The best thing we can do is to clear out. Out? Clear out where? Well, it's only six miles into Buckworth. No reason we shouldn't make it by dark. But six miles over the moor. Chances are we'll run into the police on the way. But, but your heart and your side, you're, you're still limping badly, you know. Nevertheless, we can make it. Uh, if you say so, dear. And first, a look round. Coast is clear. Let's go. Six miles. A man in good health could walk it in an hour and a half. A man in good health, which I was not. And with each succeeding step, the dusky pale horizon, violet and smoky in the soft mist of the sinking sun, 
seemed ever more distant, more inaccessible. The heady musk of the moor grasses and the gorse, these we had delighted in until now, it became choking. I could feel my eyes tear and my throat constrict, and the heart in my chest thumped and shuddered with each painful limping step I took. And then we topped a rise. Edward! What? What? Oh, look down there. Oh. A constable. <laughs> Hello there. Hello. Wait there. I'm coming up. Oh, what luck. Yes, yes, you see, I told you. Oh, well, I must say we're glad to see you. You know, you people really haven't ought to be out here. Oh, you mean about the maniac? Yes, sir. You the folks renting Miss Blossom? That's right. But you see, we found a note from that... What's his name? A note? Yes. And so we thought the best thing would be to try walking it into the village. Don't think you ought to do that, sir. If you'll excuse a suggestion. Why not? Well, between here and the town, there's any number of spots we haven't been able to check as yet. He might be hiding, you know. Oh. Well, then what shall we do? We'll go back to your house. It's a safe place. Well, now, now look here. Why don't you walk to the village with us, hmm? It's only three miles. It shouldn't take long. Well, I would, sir, but I'm due to join the search party over at the uh, Darkett Woods. Those are my orders, sir. Orders? Tell you what I will do. I'll walk along with you folks back to your cottage so you arrive there safe and sound. Back to the... Uh, Edward? Very well. As we walked, we told the constable about the letter from the curate, and he gave us background on the man Barrington Howard. Seems that Howard had been a sort of small-time actor and ex-acrobat. Nothing worse in his police record than a couple of parking offenses. And then one night, out of the blue, he had murdered five people. Five in a single night. And each had received a notification in advance. A short, obscenely worded, threatening note. Just like yours. But, but didn't they take any precautions? No, miss. Or at least not enough. But you know better. And what with the curate coming to help? A good man, the curate. He used to be a commando. Well, about this man, Howard, uh, how'd you catch him before? Well, that was odd, that was. It was what you might call psychological. He was very clever at disguising himself as an actor. He might have got clean away if it wasn't for this psychological thing. What psychological thing? Well, it was kind of a joke, sir. Some folks, you know, you bring up certain topics, they grab the conversation, and away they go. You follow me? Oh, yes, I know the type. That's how Howard was. Ah, compulsive. Yes. And on this one topic, he had what they call total recall. Total recall? He could remember everything he'd ever heard or read. Facts and figures and dates. We used to get him on his topic down at the pub just to hear him go. It was sort of a joke, you see. And so, after the crime... He was in disguise, but someone touched on his topic. Exactly. He oh. started to talk, gave himself away. We napped him. Well, what was his topic? Germany. Germany? Mm-hmm. Germany. He had a compulsive total recall about Germany. All about Germany. Well, here we are. Well, I... I wish we could persuade you to stay. Your orders, Mum. Now, just you make sure your shutters are bolted on the inside. Yes. Put a bar across the door. Mm. You'll be snug and safe. Mind you, keep that door tight till you know who it is that wants in. Oh, don't you worry, officer. We shall. Good night. Uh, good, good night. night. With his departure, we barricaded ourselves. This cottage is very old and built in the days of highway robbers, ideally suited to our situation. We lit the lamp and turned it very low, so that no light would be seen from without. And then, we waited. And we waited. Edward? Yes? What's the time? Oh. Half past eight. Oh, is it goes so slow. Yes. What? I hear something out there. What? Shh. 
You are listening to A Little Matter of Memory. Tonight's presentation in radio's outstanding theater of thrills, Suspense. One of the most effective savings programs is Uncle Sam's own, United States Savings Bonds. You will find few other financial investments like U.S. savings bonds for security. Invest regularly every week through payroll savings or bond-a-month plans, where you work or where you bank. Now we bring back to our Hollywood soundstage Lawrence Dobkin and Paula Winslow in tonight's production of A Little Matter of Memory, a tale well calculated to keep you in suspense. light of the lamp, we watched the heavy oak door. Hello in there. Mansell? Who is it? George Beale, the curate. Oh. Uh, you, uh, you got my note, didn't you? Oh, but how do we know it's not a trick? Yes. Got a torch? Uh, yes. Stand back from the door and shine it on yourself. Excellent idea. I can't be too safe, you know. I'll just look out through the slit. Ah, yes. And she's got one of those collars on, you know, clerical. Oh. Yeah. Oh, come in, sir. Ah. Uh, Mr. Mansell? Yes, yes. This is Miss Mansell. Oh, I, I'm so glad to see you. I'd have got here sooner, but you know, every last person I saw wanted to talk, 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 talk. <laughs> Well, we were and a little worried, Dr. Beale. We thought you just might have met with some accident. Accident? Oh, let's not gribble. You mean you thought I might have run into uh, him, don't you? Yes, I suppose so. Oh, but you're here now. That's what matters. Yes. And now, let's see. Hmm. Excellent place you have here. Yes, they really built them in those days. <laughs> Uh, would you like some tea, Doctor? Oh, bother tea, Joan. I have a bottle of scotch in my bag. Edward. What, what, what's wrong? Well, uh, Oh, uh, you mean on my account. Oh, my dear lady. Oh. My collar may be clerical, but my throat is British. Uh-huh. And at the moment, <laughs> quite, quite dry. <laughs> uh, you see, Joan, there, fetch some glasses, huh? Just while I find the... the uh... Ah, <laughs> here we are. Ah, yes, 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 yes. <laughs> Ah, good whiskey, a warm room, pleasant companions, and uh, I'll turn up the lamp a bit if I may. Oh, yes, do. <laughs> Dispel the gloom. <laughs> well, here are the glasses. Ah. Uh, there's little to fear about making light now, you know. I've got a gun, and I know the three of us should be a proper match for any man, uh, crazy or not, I should <laughs> say. <laughs> well, then, a toast, eh? To, uh, to... <laughs> Safety in numbers. Uh, <laughs> well, I, I really think we ought to keep clear heads tonight. <laughs> Joan's the careful one in our family. Uh, proper feminine trait. Uh, so, here we are. And I can't tell you how much better I feel now that you're here. Yes. Oh, dear. Constable told us that you, you were in the commandos during the war. Oh, yes. Hardly the sort of thing you'd expect from the village curate. Still, there was a job to be done, you know. <laughs> Edward was in the air ministry. Oh, John, John. Uh, desk job. <laughs> Bad ticker. Never really got to see it like you chaps. The big do, I mean. Oh, don't be sorry. There are a lot of things I'd, I'd give my teeth not to have seen. Like? Like Dunkirk? Like Dunkirk. <sighs> Sticky wicky Dunkirk. Mm. Seems so long ago now that... Uh, <laughs> Would you like to hear about it? <laughs> Here, have another drop. <laughs> Don't mind. Uh, uh, rum go, what? It was aught four, four, five hours that we rendezvoused with the main force off the beach. We sat there in the now snug little room and listened. He was a superb storyteller. And as he talked, the scenes of the war unrolled smoothly and excitingly and almost hypnotically. All our way clear. And ahead of us at long last 
Lay the rhyme. And after a while, what with the scotch in the warm room, I began to lose track of what he was saying. And then with startling clarity, I was wide awake. He entered Germany on the Cologne Autobahn at 3.45 on the morning of May the 20th, 1945. I remember it as if it were yesterday. It made this first sight of Germany a quite unforgettable impression on me. Of course, when one comes to think of Germany and the fate of Germany, then naturally... I looked at him as he chatted along. His eyes were glazed, and he spoke with a curious intensity. And I knew. Joan sat petrified. I reached for the scotch bottle. It was still about half full. And as the man bent forward to pick up his glass, I swung... Oh. Oh. I should have known. I should have seen through him. Oh, is, is he dead? No, 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 no. No, he's just out so quickly. Get some rope, oh. belt, anything. Please. We must tie him quickly, Joan, quickly. Yes, yes, I've never tied a man before, and Joan's knowledge of knots is limited to Christmas wrappings, but we use what was at hand. And now... We wait. What has become of the real George Beale, curate at Buckworth? Heaven only knows. This thing at our feet, bound like some grotesque cocoon in myriad rags and strings, my best Chavez ties about his wrists, Joan's Maurice nightgown gagging his mouth, what is to become of him is not our affair, but rather that of the physicians who must treat him. And it is to those men, healers of the... Hello in there! Mantle! Hello! Oh, uh, Beale? Uh, is that you, Beale? Edward Mantle? Wait, wait, don't open the door! Beale? Yes, but uh, hadn't you better take a look at me first? Oh, not now, man. Oh. Uh, there. Oh, we thought you'd been killed or yes, something. Come right in. No longer any need to fear. Oh, what do you mean, there's no... Great Scott. Yes, meet Barrington Howard. It's amazing. How on earth did you do it? Man's a giant. Oh, matter of luck, I suppose. Really didn't see through the beggar for ever so long. Hey, look at the collar, too. Yeah. <laughs> Quite an actor, what? Indeed he was. I knew he wasn't a curate when he kept reaching for that bottle. Mm. Mm. There, there is a rather strong uh, <clears throat> uh, air in here. I had to use the bottle to subdue the man. Ah. Pity. Scotch whiskey. Oh, dear me. Now then, let's take a look at these knots. Well, we, we did the best we could. Mm -hmm. This one's not too good, but we'll just redo it so it's really strong. And... Uh, Look at his legs. Oh, what's wrong? So you only really tied the ankles. Ought to be careful of the knees, you know. Oh? And I'll give you another tip. If you really want to tie a man so he's helped us fasten his ankles to his wrists, from the, from the back, like this. Ah. Uh, Edward, isn't that clever? I must say. So, <sighs> was he armed? Huh? Good Lord. He had a gun. And told us, and oh. we forgot. Look in his pocket. Uh, ah, uh, ah, here we are. Mm, nasty little weapon. The filth. Think what this might have done to your wife, Mental. With a blown her hole through her, you could stuff a grapefruit. Oh, please, oh. old man. She's been through quite a lot, you know. Sorry, Mental, but I believe in being realistic. Oh, that's, that's quite a gag you've made for him. <laughs> yeah. I don't think he'll do much talking until we're ready to take it out. Oh. We, uh, we used a silk nightgown of mine from Paris. Splendid. I just want to make sure this bar is in its place. Ah, oh, there we are. Yes. Nice, what? <laughs> Safe. Safe? But there's no longer anything or, or anybody to be safe from. Oh, you never know. <laughs> now, uh, now uh, what uh, other weapons did you have? Oh, just the bottle. Oh, I dealt him a good one with the bottle. Oh, and there, there's this carving knife. Yes. And the gun, which I have in my pocket. Yes. Well, it's, it's, it's really been quite a little adventure, eh, Manful? Oh, you <laughs> should say so, yes. yeah. You know, I kept this uh, little record, something for the physician. Oh, Mary? Oh, please. Mm -hmm. From the observations on B. Harbour, I am recording the events of the past several hours in the hope that my observations may in some measure... You realize 
realize that I'm not much for that sort of reporting. Oh, no, 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 no. I think you did splendidly. Splendidly. I wonder who else may read these notes of yours. Look. Hmm? His, his eyes are open. I never realized. Madmen really do roll their eyes. <laughs> Ugly beggar, isn't he? Yes, sir. I must say. Uh, but uh, about your report, this this stuff about Germany, did he really say this? Hmm? I I wish he'd oh, yes. close his eyes. He he's trying to say but, something. But about Germany, I mean, how could anyone say what? Well, what was it? Uh, when one comes to think of Germany and the fate of Germany, etc., etc., etc. Uh, that posh, that argle bargle about the Cologne autobahn. Oh, yes, Lady Don Rather. Any fool indeed. can see the man is dreadfully confused and misinformed about the organization of the National Socialist Party. Oh, you mean the because Nazis? Because the fact is, the organization of the party was divided into 26 garn, or districts, which did not in themselves form the various provinces of the German Reich. East Prussia, Greater Berlin, Brandenburg, East March, Pomerania, Silesia, Magdeburg, Anhalt... Highland, Meersburg, Thuringia, Schleswig-Holstein, Weser, M. John. Hanover, Edward, South, he's Brunswick, got the knife. Get back. Get back. Neil, Neil, help us. He can't. He's tied to the knife. Get back. back. The knife. The knife. The knife. Doesn't seem no. interesting. No. No. As I was saying. No. Wurttemberg, Hohenzollern, no. Baden, Hamburg. No. Mecklenburg, Lübeck. Tell me, my good... Sure, it's just there on the floor. Does this interest you? The division of Bavaria is even more fascinating, you know. Bavaria was divided into nine gowns. Swabia, Upper Palatinate, Upper Franconia, Middle Franconia, Lower Franconia, Next week, the story of how perhaps the smallest of items can be the cause of unbelievable terror and hardship. In this case, the lack of a little loose change. We call it chicken feed. That's next week on Suspense. Suspense is produced and directed by Norman MacDonald, with music composed by Lucian Morrowick and conducted by Lud Gluskin. James Heldick's story, A Little Matter of Memory, was specially adapted for Suspense by James Poe. Featured in the cast were Edgar Barrier, Joseph Kearns, and Richard Peel. Follow the serial adventures of Mr. Keene, Evening Times, on the CBS Radio Network. <laughs>